Be It by John Kendrick Bangs. Chapter 1. For some weeks after a happy event which transformed the bottom of Mrs. Rivers to charming Mrs. John Pedagog, all went well at the ladies' select home for the single gentleman. It is only proper that during the honeymoon, at least of the happy couple, the celebrities were between the idiot and his fellow boarders would cease. We expecting too much of mankind, however, to look for continued emphasis. The morning arrived when nature once more resurges herself, and trouble again. Just what it prompted the remark, no one knows. It happened that he did, did say that he thought art. Of all, life on the canal boat had its advantages. Miss Pedagog, who had come into the dining room in a slightly irritable frame of mind, induced perhaps by Mrs. Pedagog's insistence, as he is now part proprietor of the house, he should be a little more prompt in making his contributions towards his maintenance. Choose to take a remark of his playing affection upon the way things are managed in the household. Ha, huh, he said, I hope that your habit of being airing your views have been put aside for once and for all. Very absurd hope still, my dear sir, as I did it. Views are not aired become musty. Why shouldn't I give them an amphibic opportunity once in a while because they are the sort of views to which suffocation is the most appropriate end snapped the schoolmaster the only way who asserts that you asserted that life in a colonel boat has its advantages ought to go further and prove it sincerity by living on one I can't afford it said the idiot meekly he isn't cheap by any means and no means it's the first place you can't live happily on a trail boat unless you can afford to keep horses in fact, the canal boat of the earth is a combination of the most expensive luxuries, such as the combined yachting and driving with domesticity. Nevertheless, if you can put your mind on it, you'll find out with a canal boat of your home, you can do a great many things that you can't do with your house. I decline to put my mind on a house, my canal boat. This is Pentacle. Mr. Pentacle, sharply passing his coffee back to Mrs. Pentacle. For another lump of sugar, thereby contributing to the good lady's discomfort, since before the marriage, the mere fact that the coffee had been poured by a fair hand, giving it all the sweetness it needed. Or at least that was what the schoolmaster said. Once they had more than once at that. You never, you were under no obligation to do so, the idiot returned. Though I find mine like yours, I put it on that canal boat, have it towed away somewhere out of sight. These other gentlemen, however, I think you agree with me when I say that the mere fact that Canal Boat can be moved about the country in no sense of feature anywhere seems shows that the dwelling place is a period of house. Take this house, Vincent. This neighbourhood used to be the best in town. It's still far from being the worst neighbourhood in town, but it has been for several years deteriorating. This gentleman should have a Turkish bath on the one corner and a Turkish grocery store on the other. It has taken much of the air refinement which characterised it when the block was devoted to res- residential purposes in Tolly. You now p- suppose a moment that this street were a canal, that the house, house were a canal boat? The canal would run down as much as it pleased the neighbourhood, would deteriorate eternally. It would not affect the dwelling of this house as a home of refinement people, as long as it possible to hitch up the team of horses, the front stoop, and tow it a better plain courtesy. I like to wager every man at this table that Mrs. Pedagog will take will take five minutes to make her mind to tow this house up to the spot near Central Park. If it were a canal boat, then streets of water instead of a mixture of water, sand and Belgian blocks. Now take us, said the boat of Manic. Tut tut, ejected Pen- Mr. Pedagog. You seem to lose sight of another fact, said the idiot, warming up to this subject. If a man had a sense of beginning to adapt a canal boat life, system of life, he's used to that sort of thing. He should be n- not. He would not be hard upon us. The summer, t- us in some time, we have to live in hotels in order that we eat our families and reap the benefits of a period of country life. We could simply drive off the country section of the country where we desire to be. Hotels would not be needed if a man could take his house along with him into the fields of one phase of life. And much more was more good and bad the more bad the good in it will be entirely obliterated. There is nothing more disturbing the sanitary of domestic man's mind. The artificial manner of living avails the most summer 
homes of no sister paying having to pay bills every morning Monday morning under penalty of losing one's luggage would be appreciated all the comforts of home would be directly within reach a trouble incident upon getting the trunks packed and children ready for a long day's journey by rail the fatigue rising from such a journey would be reduced to a minimum the troubles attendant would upon going into a far country and leaving one's house in sole charge of a lot of servants a month or two every year we had done away with the tally if any time it would become necessary to discharge one of his servants she would be put she could be put off the boat in an instant and the boat could be pushed out into the middle of the canal so that his discharged servant could not possibly get aboard again and take him a revenge by smashing the little crockery of fetches this is one of the worst features of living in a structure home you were entirely at the mercy of vindictive servants. They should know, they know precisely where you live, and you cannot escape them. They cannot come back. They can come back with there's no man around. Raise several varieties of Ned with your wife and your children. They have mobile houses and such as can about. You would be such as would can about would be. You always go off and leave your family perfectly in perfect safety. How about the safety in the storm? said Bibba Manic. Safety in the storm? echoed the idiot. What seems an absurd sort of question? No one who knows anything about canal boats. I have, I for one, ever heard of a canal boat. He says he damaged in the storm, as long as it was anchored in the canal proper. He said he isn't any da- more dangerous than it'd be a canal boat. In the storm is between a house that offers resistance, the wind and shaking from the roof to cellar, every blast, small houses. Have been blown out from their foundations, and the canal boats sunk, provided only care had been taken to protect them. And you think the canal boat would be healthy? asked the doctor. How about dampness and all that? This is a professional question. That is a professional question, we don't need it. Which I think you could answer better than I. I don't see why a canal boat shouldn't be healthy, however. The dampness would not amount to very much. Being outside one's dwelling and not within it, as a case with any houses, a canal boat having a cellar would not have a damp one. Even if it were one untoward, um, untoward circumstance, it would bring a leak. The water would be pumped out at once and wet, plugged up. However this might be, I offer you another way to this board, on the pint, that there is more people die in houses than on for canal boats. We would rather you, we would rather give you our money right out, retorted the doctor. Thank you, said the idiot. But I don't need money. I don't like money. Money is responsible for more extravagance than any other commodity in existence. Besides, I'm not intimate enough to get along well enough, very well together. When I have any immediacy, I live my best to get rid of myself of it. When I return to our canal boat, I return and look at disapproval of Mr. Whittlecock's eyes. He doesn't seem to think any more my scheme and do the best of you. Which I regret, since I believe that it would be grind uh, if land emphasis was supplanted by a canal system that's proposed by myself. Take church in a rainy morning, for instance. A great many people stay at home from church at a rainy morning just because they want to. Just because they do not want to venture out in the wet. Suppose we all live in canal boats. Would not people be deprived of this flimsy pretext for staying at home if their homes would be towed up to the church door? Or better than not yet, gay emptying that churches followed out the same plan, themselves constructed like church boats? How easy it would be for the sexton to drive the church around the town and take the atmospheres. In the main manner, it would be glorious for men, like ourselves, who have to go on a dully tour. For consideration, Mrs. Pedder, don't go. Well, could have driven us to our various places for business every morning, turning us in the evening. Think how far it would be for me, for instance, instead of having to come home every night, overcrowded elevated train or cable car, have the office boy come and announce, Mr. Pedagog's select home for gentlemen is at the ho- at the door, Mr. Idiot. I would step right out to my office, into my charming little bedroom, up the bow, and the time and usually extended to jails. We do a dressing for tea. Then we would stop at the court house, our legal friend, and as for you, Dr. Caswell, when we revel in driving his jolting house about town in his daily rounds among his patients. 
Would that, what would become of my office hours? asked the doctor. This house was rolling giddily all about the city from morning till night. I don't know what would become of my office pages. They might die a little sooner or live a little longer, that is all. The idiot, if I hadn't been able to find a house at all, then I think it would be better for us. For much as I admire you, doctor, I think your office hours are a nuisance to the rest of us. I had to elbow my way out of the house this morning before a double line suffers from the months of the infernusia. Your friends, uh, a sort of a pleasing, afflicted patience of yours. I didn't like it very much. I don't l- believe that they liked it much either, returned the doctor. Our man with sprained ankle told me about you. You shoved him in passing. Well, I can, you can apologise to him. On my behalf, as we turn the idiot, you might add that he might expect very much the same treatment wherever uh, with he, be, he, a boy of measles, stand between me and the door. Bang ankles aren't contagious. I sh- preferred shoving him to uh, the other alternative. Doctor, to a sudden, the idiot rose to go. Where will the house be in this evening? At 6.30, Mrs. Pendergrock? He asked as he pushed the chair back to the table. Where? Why, here, of course, returned the lame lady. Why, yes, of course, as the idiot, with an impatient gesture. How foolish me. I really have been so wrapped up in my canal about her, dear. I came to believe that it probably might be possibly real, not a dream at all. I have always believed that perhaps I could find the house and something towed somewhere up in the Wichita County, or return, we might all escape the city's tax and personal property, which I did and told is unusually high this year. We were we were that such a terrible sully, he didn't kiss his hand over Mrs. Petal Dog, retired from the scene.